Snestruck. Hi there, let's take a quick look at every single boxing game that ever came out for Super Nintendo, including those that never left Japan, starting out with Ashido no Cho for Super Famicom. This is a fun, no-frills arcade-style boxing game, the kind where you put in the cartridge, press start twice, and just like that you're fighting. No characters to pick, and not that much in the way of strategy here either. Sure, you punch and duck and dodge, but the game is kind of herky-jerky and it's tough to get a good rhythm going sometimes, but still, if you're looking for an arcade-style two-player boxing game, this one is pretty good. Next is Best of the Best Championship Karate. Wait a second, this isn't boxing. Well, I gotta shoehorn it in there. I don't know what else to do with it. Anyway, this got released on a ton of different systems, but the Super Nintendo version almost feels like one of those cinematic type games. You know, like Out of This World or Prince of Persia. It's tough to get a good grasp of how to do things because you move kind of awkwardly. This is one of those games that's tough to accurately judge because there is some interesting stuff here, like customizing your own moves. It's just the gameplay itself is so odd. Overall, there's just not enough meat on the bone here to warrant that kind of time and Investment to get any good at this game. Boxing Legends of the Ring is another game that takes some serious time to get good at, but at least you get to fight as some of the all-time greats like Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Hagler and Hearns, and even Jake LaMotta. I love how the game looks, the over-the-shoulder perspective is really cool, and your life meter is depicted by how your face looks in the corner of the screen. Kinda reminds me of Doom. There's the usual one-on-one -on -one mode, but there's also a career mode that's pretty cool. Boxing Legends of the Ring isn't a button mash fest, here you have to fight for positioning, have a strategy, and set up punches. Again, this game is tough to get good at, but it looks insane sounds great, and the gameplay has some intelligence behind it. I'd recommend this one. This was released in Mexico as Chavez 2, but I'll get to that later. Next, there's two games featuring George Foreman, the first of which was George Foreman's KO Boxing, a game that was seemingly everywhere back then. Seriously, this was up there with Shaq Fu and how much this game was advertised. Anyway, this is kind of a Punch-Out clone, but without any of the fun, the charm, or even any of the pattern recognition that came with Punch-Out. The other George Foreman game is titled Foreman for Real. The perspective changes to match something like Boxing Legends of the Ring, but it has the same kind of feel that Foreman's KO Boxing has, which is that it's kind of a button-mashing mess. If I had to pick between the two, I'd go with Foreman for real, but man, the heads on these boxers' bodies just look creepy as hell and wrong. It's not that bad of a game, just mediocre. You can find better. Next we have a Japan-only Super Famicom game, Anizuka Katsuya Super Virtual Boxing. This one takes a first-person perspective, the controls are responsive and intuitive, and there are even special attacks like this Fist of Flames here. That's pretty sweet. This game is kind of limited, but it's English-friendly, and it's pretty decent. It's an easy pick-up-and-play arcade-style boxing game. Riddick Bow Boxing is an interesting case. This game was made in 1993, but was released in Mexico, and released in the southwestern United States under the title Chavez, as in Julio Cesar Chavez. What's more, this game plays just like Boxing Legends of the Ring. Yeah, it's a different side perspective here instead of over the shoulder, but the controls are very similar. It turns out that Boxing Legends of the Ring was actually released in Mexico as Chavez 2, the supposed sequel to this game, despite the fact that each game had a different developer. Weird. But yeah, Riddick Bow Boxing, or Chavez, is pretty decent, but you'd be better off playing its better looking quote unquote sequel, Boxing Legends of the Ring. Back to the Super Famicom we go with Ring Ni Kakero. This game was sold as part of the Japanese Nintendo Power download game service. Okay, I seriously don't have the slightest clue what I'm doing here. No matter what I do, I just keep getting hammered, and my opponent keeps pulling these crazy moves out of his ass. Hey, feel free to try this one. It certainly has a great look to it. Maybe I just suck. But there doesn't appear to be that much beyond the regular one-on-one -on -one boxing mode here. At last, we get to Super Punch-Out, easily the best game on this list. It's immensely easy for anyone and everyone to pick up this game and get the hang of rather quickly. It features the same kind of simple pattern recognition that Punch-Out for NES had, in addition to a momentum meter that allows you to go medieval on their ass. Super Punch-Out looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, and has a very simple method of gameplay that's easy to learn, but very tough to master. The patterns here can be pretty complex, much tougher than Punch-Out, but it's rewarding. Hell, go look up some of the speedruns of this game on YouTube, some of them are just insane. But yeah, obviously Super Punch-Out is the best boxing game on the SNES, that should go without saying. There's still one more game to get to, and that's TKO Super Championship Boxing. This one takes on a 2D side view and is more of a button mash fest, but not too much so. There's a meter up top that indicates your strength of each punch, so you can't just pound the button. You have to uh, pound it at certain intervals. There's not that much here for strategy, so this game is just okay. It's definitely not bad, it's just that there's not that much beyond the surface.
So yeah, that's it for boxing games on the SNES. The best is obviously Super Punch-Up, but if you want something else, Boxing Legends of the Ring is pretty good. But if you want to try something completely under the radar that's a fun multiplayer game, you might want to try Ashida no Joe. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.